that. Politicians always talk debt and deficit, but the numbers keep getting bigger, $20 trillion in debt, and that's despite warnings that we're headed for disaster. There hasn't been compromise on the issue, and across the board cuts took place called sequestration. These had a negative impact on the district by hurting the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. Mr. O'Connor, you said you'd take the best ideas from Democrats and Republicans and forge compromise. What are the best ideas on the debt? Yeah, so I think that there's two things that we need to do. First, as I learned in business, we need to do an audit of the federal government um, every year and look for the wasteful spending that's occurring in all the departments. Because just lopping off, for example, the Department of Education, as Congressman Ginta has suggested, would be crazy. Because then who's going to administer the student loan program? Who's going to administer Pell Grants? We need to go through agency by agency. And one area that I've already identified where there is a significant amount of waste is the use of high paid federal contractors. In the Great Recession, the only part of the country that was seeing an increase in housing prices and an increase in income was the greater Washington region because of these high paid federal contractors who are doing the work that federal government workers should be doing at a much lower cost. So that's where I would focus first. And then secondly, we need to solve Social Security and Medicare because they are the impending crisis ahead in terms of the uh, burgeoning deficit. And I would do that through my minimum wage plan, which will generate huge amounts of additional FICA taxes and Medicare taxes. Thank you, sir. Congressman Ginto, the Congress that you were part of failed to compromise and prevent sequestration, which was intended to be a punishment for Congress's <laughs> inaction. Is that the best people can expect from Congress? People should expect more. There's frustration in New Hampshire and around the country, and I join in that frustration. Uh, when the President of the United States took office, the, def the debt excuse me, was about half uh, of what it is today. Uh, that spiraled under President Obama. The reality is that uh, my opponent, Carol Shea Porter, supports President Obama and supports those policies. Uh, my other opponent, Mr. O'Connor, uh, supports even larger uh, federal programs. He's a supporter and I, uh, of Bernie Sanders, uh, who nobody thinks is going to get the debt under control. The reality is uh, we can reduce the short-term deficit, eliminate that within, uh, within a couple of years, and then focus on long-term debt. The way you do that is through tax reform, regulatory reform, uh, reducing additional spending uh, through the appropriations process. I've done that as a member of Congress and I've done that as a mayor. Representative Shea Porter, when you were in office and Democrats held the majority, Progress wasn't made on this issue either. Why not? Well, I think we all remember exactly what happened. I certainly do because I went into Congress in January of 2007. The economy was teetering under George Bush, who was president at the time, and the Republican Congress had voted for, well, they didn't even uh, do a full vote, actually. We'll talk about that sometime. Two wars, and they gave tax breaks in the middle of two wars. So by the time we arrived, the surplus had gone into a debt. And then we saw Wall Street because they would not would not uh, pay attention to what was happening on Wall Street. And so Wall Street collapsed. We were losing 800,000 jobs a month in January of 2009. This is what the president inherited. Now we've had 79 months of solid uh, private sector job growth. We have seen the unemployment rate get cut below 5%. And we have seen a lot of changes, but wages are flat, so we need to do better with that. But to try to shift it onto the Democrats, I think everybody remembers what President Obama used to say. He said, don't, they, they're the ones who drove the car into the ditch. They should never have the keys again. And that's exactly what happened there. So it's not a, it's not a good thing and it's not an honorable thing right. to try to shift it onto the Democrats. I was there. I know how tough that was. Congress